Well, you're with us here on the South African Morning, the Wednesday edition. Let's just take you over to where authorities are busy speaking about struggle activist Solomon Kalushi Mahlangu uh, being remembered today. Tums hanged on this day back in 1979. Yeah, he was only 22 years of age uh, at the time. He had never fired a shot, but he was charged for having common purpose to commit the crime. Well, we know the ANC and the Mahlangu family are visiting the Hosimampuru Correctional Center. This in Swani, where Mahlangu was hanged. Early on, our colleague Pule Lushuti Jones was speaking to the ANC Youth League coordinator, Nomneba Mahlaudi, about what is expected today, the legacy of Solomon Kalushi Mahlangu, and what can be expected from the program today, as you can see, the correctional service uh, you know authorities i suppose speaking to the media and uh, giving them a walkabout uh, of what is to be um, expected quite an emotional day i can imagine uh, you know not only for the anc as it's their comrade uh, but also for the family uh, it, i don't think it matters how many years and decades have yeah. passed uh, it's always going to be a very difficult day for the family and for the country. You would have just seen, as our camera person now following the delegates into the prison itself, a sign on the bottom left-hand side mm. uh, that said executions. I'll be honest, I'm not sure where exactly we are going. Mm. Uh, the audio wasn't that great outside with the prison official speaking, but I think we're going to try and stay with our camera person just for the moment. Uh, I suspect either we are going to, as we have in the past, go to the cell yeah. where Solomon Mahlangu was held, or it could be the actual area uh, where he was hanged all those years mm, ago. I'm, mm. I'm not by any means a prison expert, but I want to imagine uh, that this is where autopsies were done uh, after those prisoners, mm, those victims mm. of apartheid, uh, were killed. I imagine that this is where the uh, uh, autopsies were taking place. Uh, Cameraman Shahid uh, following through for us at the moment. It is a very, very big building. I actually did go there years ago. Yes. And there it is. This is actually the gallows. Mm. Uh, in Kosi, uh, Mampuru prison. This is where uh, it would have happened all those years ago. Today, uh, if Shahid does go back up, Shahid isn't able to hear me, but what you would have seen there is the, uh, the trap doors yeah. of the floor. Right. The prisoners, the victims, mm -hmm. the condemned would have gone up those stairs you saw a second mm -hmm. ago, stand on that wooden platform. Right, right. Um, and then, obviously, uh, the inevitable would happen. Uh, and they would drop down. So I think just being given a tour at the moment mm -hmm. uh, of the prison. But there it is. You can see all the, uh, all the history around Solomon Mahlangu. Yeah, and there's a picture of him, Solomon Kalushi uh, Mahlangu, quite a, a figure in history when we talk about uh, you know, some of the MK operatives who are remembered uh, you know, for you know, basically being charged for crimes uh, back in the day uh, during apartheid and obviously very young at the time, 22 years of age, being charged uh, you know, for murder, being charged uh, for committing such uh, a crime and of course the apartheid regime at the time taking it upon themselves uh, to execute him, hang him at the age of of, uh, 22. We're commemorating, of course, uh, this day 43 years on, and the family having to relive uh, this, knowing that this is the very institution, the very facility that uh, was uh, last where uh, Solomon Kalushi Mahlangu was alive, must be absolutely emotional. A day, you know, for obviously the ANC as well, the Mkonto, where these were to uh, remember their former comrade as well. Uh, uh, Shahid obviously taking us through uh, what the uh, Correctional Service authorities are just explaining to the family and uh, the media at this time, giving them that uh, a walkabout of the uh, facility and explaining the history behind uh, today. And I mean, Solomon Maklango Gareth, I'm sure you would agree, uh, represents many more, many more, uh, mm. you know, MKs that were also killed in a similar manner. Um, his story absolutely touching but it represents the many many other South Africans who unfortunately made their untimely death the very same way. And these would have been uh, some of the areas that Solomon Mahlangu and those prisoners would have seen 52 steps mm. you would have seen on that wall 52 steps uh, is uh, what it took from when they would leave the holding cells up to those execution chambers uh, and some uh, willingly going, some singing struggle songs, yeah. some not saying anything at all, mm. uh, some of them fighting back against the authorities as they were being led uh, to those gallows that we saw a couple of minutes ago uh, as well. But without a doubt, it's the struggle songs that are so well known these days uh, that would have found their roots in times like this. Uh, and I remember covering this a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what unfortunately we couldn't hear from the officials at the prison was the audio wasn't very good right is that when a prisoner was coming through uh, an MK operative or a struggle uh, veteran and they were on their way uh, to their 
uh, to their demise. It wasn't mm -hmm. just the prisoner mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. be singing the struggle songs. It would, in fact, be the entire prison, all the prisoners on that level. Yeah. Uh, a couple of stories yeah, down, a couple of uh, flights of stairs down would have been singing as well. Let's see if the audio is any better inside this room. We have arrived. This is what we call a chapel. This is a place where the families were just seated like this. Some of families of those that were executed were seated like this. In here, this is the lift that was used to bring our coffins as a lab so that the family can pay their last respect. And the last respect was not done in a usual way, but it was done in an unusual way. Because as Africans, we, are, we know that when a person is to be buried, when the coffin arrives at home, that respect that we give, part of the last respect, is to open first by the family to confirm as to whether it is really a real the, 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 the person or is it the, the, the family member in the coffin. But here during that time it was different. The families were only allowed to see the coffin at a distance, sitting there at the, at the at my right hand side, after being lifted up through this. And only a small paper or a tag that was put outside the coffin. The coffin lay, the, 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 the name of the person was put in there, but the family was not allowed to confirm as to whether who were targeting who that coffin. And then from there, there would be a, a clergyman for a man with a white collar, Umfundisi, who would be standing here. Sometimes I ask myself, and I believe the very same question that you are asking yourself, would be, what scripture was read by the for that family that was not allowed to confirm as to whether the person that was inside the box was a particular individual? I imagine what ways we utter and said directly. On what way they went? Where they specifically meant the, the intention was to encourage and to, 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 to say to the family, be strong. Or it was just right for the sake of the person who was just on duty. I can, I can imagine that. But hey, it was done that way. And then the 10 to 15 minutes kind of service, that was even maybe less than 10 minutes. And then from there, the family was allowed to go out. The family was not even allowed to accompany the, 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 the court to the graveyard. And it's only Okumrit Kalusha Matlango that was very differently compared to the rest. On that very same day of the field of the, of the burial, we understand Mamiluli was waiting because they heard that he was coming to be buried. But the head of the prison by then decided that they could use ambulance instead of using the hairs like the rest of the coffin of the coffin that was taken. Then from there, they, they were redirected and went to Atriji. All, 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 all the political prisoners or people who were executed, all of them during that time, not only political prisoners, but even those who were sentenced to death for different crimes. They were buried in Mamelodi Cemetery, especially black people were sent to Mamelodi Cemetery and Rebecca Street. And uh, yesterday's, and yesterday's, and others, white people were sent differently to a different graveyard. Now, who Kalusha Matam Bukumrit was only sent to go and be buried in Natridgeville in order to avoid the crowd that was waiting painfully so in Mamelodi. That's the reason why he was buried in Natridgeville, not buried in Mamelodi. 
Again, when you look on this side, on, 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 on the side, Suna Abu Tatesti and Bantu Giko, and their other comrades as well, Abu Abdullah Heron and the like. Um, all these guys that you see on your left hand side are not people who were executed in the gallows, but they were detained and they died in detention. And we thank the minister and the government for making sure that this smaller and other important museum is made so that heroes can be remembered and be commemorated. Since 6 of April 1979 up until now, the government is still standing and saying to the families, we will make sure that we create that space so that every time when these dates come, heroes such as Abu Kalusha Matangu can be remembered. And we are glad that we are here. Although I said it is not a nice place, it is not even an entertaining place. Now, from here, this is the end of the, of, of, of the final part of the trip that we are going to take now to show you what was happening and what was the behavior of the weather during that time. Um, when we go out here, it's a pity because um, we have older people in our, elderly people in our presence. But what was supposed to happen, we were supposed to, sh to switch off that light. So that when we get with step number one, the 52 steps that led to the final destination, this is the place where I, 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 I always believe that the light must be off. Imagine what was going on in the mind of our comrade Kalusha Matamu and the rest of the comrades that were executed here. Imagine what was going on in the heart of the family knowing that tomorrow is the final day. As we walk through the state 52 steps, as you walk in there, though you are wearing your shoes, I should be saying, let us all remove our shoes. When they used, they, they, they climb on those 52 steps, from the first step until the last one, there was no noise. All of them were cuffed, their hands at the back, and then from there, a, a, a well-built <coughs> water was behind each and every individual that was going to be executed. With your hands at the back, some were not even interested in wearing their shoes. There will be a song that they were singing when they come, because seven people were executed per day. When they come from this side, from the cells, from the holding cells, because uh, when, 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 when it was time, for them to be executed, they would be informed and seven days before and from there they would be removed from their original cells and be sent to go and stay at the uh, uh, waiting cells. And then from there, this is the door that they'll be using. Their minds were dark. They could not think of anything. They could not see anything. When they walked, they could not even hear their steps. All they could feel was the hard grip behind by a strong, well-built waters that were taking them one, one, one by one, following. Others were not even interested, not wearing shoes. Majority were not wearing shoes because they, 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 they never saw any importance of wearing shoes anymore. So as we walk the 52 steps, imagine what was going on in the mind of comrades and the rest of the comrades that were executed in this place. Imagine the plans, the goals, the future, the intention of wanting to become somebody. The future, each and every young person who says, this is what I want to be, this is what I want to achieve, to be a family member, have a family, and, and, and proceed to one, two, three, one, two, three, and achieve certain things in life. But starting with the first step, all the dreams were shattered. The mind was blocked. Though some could sing the song, but the moment they begin with the first step, the sound of their voice could not be heard anymore. They could not hear their steps when they climbed those steps. It was not an easy thing. So because of the time as well, I'm going to allow if there's anyone question or will ask questions towards the end.
if you allow me to do that, because I know that we are just a maritime scholarship service in the program. Uh, the program director will also guide me as to whether about time in the life. So questions will be asked to us by the, the, the final part of this, our team. Will we all move? Can we also allow, allow uh, the family of Madame Mosley to come and talk about the On this day, back in 1979, the 6th of April, that these would have been the final steps, the final moments, the 52 steps to where Solomon Maklangu would finally uh, meet his maker in the end as a result uh, of the apartheid government at the time as well. His last words as he got to the top of these steps that will uh, still be remembered by South Africa, my blood will nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. As we leave the mm. family, the media there for the moment, those steps they're going mm. up now, mm. those are the steps. It was Absolutely. actually very well presented, Ooh, very well presented. Uh, by the officials. I, a lot, I actually didn't know exactly how it worked. Yeah. Um, yeah. And from there, they would have gone up those two or three flights of stairs right. uh, to the gallows. But I like the way they said that. Could you imagine what Solomon Maklangu and the others I was others about to say. You took the words thinking. right out of my mouth. Can you imagine the dreams they had? I mean, he was 22 years of age. Mm. Uh, you can only imagine the age group mm. of the other uh, you know, political prisoners that also met the same fate, what plans they had um, you know, for themselves, for their families, for their country, um, and having to walk those steps. He even mentioned, as you can see, the, 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 the steps being counted and written there, numbers 23, 23. Uh, some were not even wearing shoes. Uh, they didn't see the need to wear shoes anymore. What was the relevant when you, the relevance of wearing shoes when you're about to lose your life, you're about to meet your untimely death? And uh, the family members there, of course, uh, taking those steps and, uh, you know, rehashing those emotions once more. Uh, I can't imagine how emotional uh, that must be for the Matlangu family. And, uh, of course, uh, Shahida, our cameraman, do the best he can to just give us those live visuals inside the Jose Mamburu uh, facility. And, and also, quite interestingly, you know, the uh, uh, authorities mentioning that, um, you know, they had to divert his final resting place mm. from Mamilodi to Atridgeville because of the many South Africans, the many community members and residents from Mamilodi who were awaiting for his remains. Uh, to come out and to accompany him, but they had to, of course, divert uh, and take a different route. Yeah, they were, they were very worried about uh, crowd and crowd control. As we leave this for the moment, you can once again yeah. see uh, the image of the late Solomon Maklangu today, his last day on this earth, and his words, and I'm sure will mm. echo later in the day when we go back to his memorial, uh, my blood will nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. We'll go back to that again mm. today as we continue to celebrate the life of not just Solomon Maklango, of course, today it's the commemoration, yeah. but so many other people who lost their lives in those gallows.